up until now, all the commands you've seen in the previous videos are executed manually on the console, one after the other. What that means is that throughout the series until now, I had to write each separate command on the console and then press enter and wait for the result to be displayed on the next line before the command prompt appears again so that I write the next command on the console and so on. Now, why is line by line R code execution not appropriate most of the times? Well, most of the times a single R programming target task that you have in mind cannot be accomplished with a single command but with a set of, of commands. For instance, if you need to prepare your dataset and do some necessary wrangling and cleaning, you would have to execute some specific commands in a specific order that you probably want to reuse again and again, since these commands in that order would be relevant to many use case scenarios. Or if you would like to conduct a hypothesis testing or some statistical modeling on your data, you would need to have a series of commands that would be executed one after the other and you want them saved somewhere so that you can use them later again and again. Moreover, to be able to share the code with other R coders, you uh, should be able to store an interesting set of commands somewhere in computer's memory. To reuse a set of R commands, you need to know how to read, create and load R scripts or R programs as we call them. These two terms, R scripts and R programs, are used interchangeably with no real difference for our purposes and you will often hear misuse the one or the other. So, what is an R script in the end of the day? Well, an R script is simply a text file that contains R commands that are written in a one line per command fashion. That's it. Nothing more and nothing less. Here is an example of how to create and run an R script. I'm in front of the RStudio environment as you can see. On the top left pane there is an editor where you can write anything you like. However, the only difference with any other simple text editor such as Notepad is that the RStudio editor recognizes R code and that is why it colors parts of the code and automatically indents code when there is a reason, as you'll be seeing from the next video on. For now, I will simply write down a couple of commands and save the file. I will first create a vector. And then I will simply subset some of its members from the second member on to the fifth one. Now let's save the file. I gave it the name test2. Now let's load it again and try to run it. The run options are on the top uh, right corner of the same pane. I will source the whole file here. From now on, since we will be moving to more complex pieces of code that need to be written following indentation patterns, I will write the code on the RStudio editor pane for clarity and convenience instead of the console and I will execute the code from there. These lines of code, when saved, can be called R scripts written in the RStudio editor pane. What is important to grasp is that an R script is just a text file and the only difference with any other plain text file is that it only contains R commands. Other than that you can open any text editor you like and create an R script. Usually though people write and run their script within R Studio as we did here. Oh and something uh, that I just missed is that when you save your file you just need to uh, put some uh, extension in the end as you put with the text files uh, where you have the dot and then the txt, uh, those files uh, will have to have the suffix dot r, either capital R or lower R, it doesn't matter. Uh, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel in case you haven't done that yet, so that you can receive notifications when new content is uploaded. See you in the next video.